Throughout the years I've owned my Toyota Tacoma, I've put a lot of work into building it for the street and for the dirt. But this weekend, I find myself in beautiful Yosemite, California with some friends from college and surfing, and I need to turn it into a camping setup. Now, I have done this a few times in my truck, but since the camping trips are pretty far and few between for me, I don't have a perfectly dialed setup when it comes to that. It would be so awesome to build this truck into like an overland ready rig, but first and foremost, this truck is my daily driver for now. And second of all, I'm not doing camping trips compared to the times I'm going off road during the day. I really intentionally built this truck for off road performance. That's why I've got Fox shocks tuned great for the desert, method wheels with B grip that will allow me to air down pretty low. Not that those things aren't also useful for overlanding or camping but off-road performance is what I've personally prioritized and that's where most of my money and effort has gone into this build. So when it comes to trips like this I am looking for kind of a middle of the road option because I still want to be comfortable but I don't need anything too crazy. So in this video I'll show you how I set up my truck for this. The great thing about this setup is one, it's pretty inexpensive. Now this is relative, but I would say in general in the overland space, things are really, really pricey. So with the setup I'm about to show you, I'm not saying that it's inexpensive, but it pales in comparison when it comes to price with a lot of other overland builds out there, of course. And then two, the other thing is I like that I can retain the daily driver aspect of my truck. Like I don't really have to modify my truck to get this set up. However, of course, there are some downsides to something like this, and I'm going to be talking about them in this video. So I hope you'll enjoy and maybe see some cool gear for your truck in this video. But as always, let me know what kind of stuff you guys like and have for your trucks in the comment section down below. Since I'm only one person and this is a quick trip, thankfully I don't have a lot of stuff, it all fits in the cab. In my truck bed, I do have the deck drawer system as you'll see more of in this video, but since I always keep my off-road recovery equipment and tools in there anyways, it's great that I don't really have to worry about packing those items and I'm good to go for the most part. Before I leave in the morning, I do a quick check of fluid levels, tires, and I'm off early because the drive from San Diego, where I live, to the campsite in Yosemite is just over eight hours if I'm not stopping. But of course I did a few times. You know, this drive is not unbearable, especially since I caravaned with friends and the drive itself is pretty scenic. We stopped for gas three times, I think, and around 6 p.m. I'm in the National Park. It's gorgeous, even just driving through it. At around 6.45 p.m., I made it to the campsite, Tamarack Flat Rock, which I highly recommend. This campsite in Yosemite National Park is more secluded, but it's got some beautiful rock formations and lots of wildlife. Anyways, I started setting up camp a little later than I'd like since I'm setting up as it's getting dark.
Then I spent the rest of the night with my friends, and when there's light the next morning, I show you guys my setup in more detail. So this is the setup. So the biggest thing I have here in this setup is this truck bed tent. This is from Right Line Gear. I've had this tent for years. You guys have probably seen it on the channel if you've been around for some of my previous camping videos. And I would say overall, I've used this specific tent probably like 10-ish times. But yeah, I get a lot of people that ask me what I think overall of this tent. And I would say the too long, don't read version would be it gets the job done. So obviously the way it works is it just sits on top of my five foot truck bed over here. Right now too, I have a rain guard on it because we were expecting rain last night, although thankfully we didn't get any. To set it up, you do have to have the tailgate open and then you also can't drive around while this thing is on. It is very challenging to get this tent to fit correctly. And actually right now, I think I am doing a pretty good job, all things considered, after using this tent a couple of different times with how I've set it up, even though it isn't perfect. But what I like about it is it's not super flimsy or anything. It's actually a pretty sturdy in my experience. If you tighten down these straps correctly, it holds down pretty nice. I've been in decently windy conditions with this truck bed tent and I've never had any problems with it knocking over. I do really like these mesh windows. Obviously it's raining, so we're not gonna get a very good view, but I will say the rain guard is actually doing a really good job at keeping this whole place dry. There's another little window over here, again, covered by the rain guard. There's a flap that's supposed to go over the truck bed, but again, it's just so hard to get this to fit on my Tacoma as is. So once I get it to a point that it's sturdy, I just like don't touch it. So pros about this truck bed tent. The number one thing is it is pretty cheap or inexpensive relative to a lot of overlanding gear you find. When I bought it a couple years ago, I think it was in the $100 range-ish. It's all also like self-contained in a kit. So once you like pack it all up, that's all you really need to bring and you've got your tent. So some cons with this tent. One, it is by no means a luxury setup. Although, like I said, it gets the job done and it's perfect for someone like me who, again, isn't camping in their truck every single weekend, isn't living out of their truck. And the second negative thing I would say about this tent is it can be quite the process to set up and also tear down. Now, after doing this several times, it takes me about 15 to 20 minutes, but I remember the first couple of times, it was like a half hour plus process trying to figure everything out. So that's probably the biggest thing I don't like about this tent, but I don't wanna be too negative because overall, I do really like it. I would recommend a setup like this if you feel like you're kind of in a similar situation to me. I just like how I can keep my truck build in general kind of set up the way it is mostly for off-roading and somewhat go into camping mode whenever I need to. So again, tailgate's gotta be down for this whole thing to work. I don't mind because it's a good place to keep my shoes. By the way, these are like my favorite shoe brand right now on running. I like the way they look, even though some people say they're kind of funky. These are my like all purpose ones. They're the ones I run in, sometimes use in videos, but these ones I have are basically the same version, just waterproof. See, like all terrain tread mud terrain tread. I've got some Cali raised LED bed stiffeners over here. If you don't know what these are for, basically the Tacoma bed, as you can see, is made out of composite, it is not made of metal. So over time, if you do a lot of off-roading like me, or if you have like a camper shell or extra weight pushing down on the bed, these composite beds can actually crack. They're great because they're light, they're easy to clean, obviously they don't rust, but that is one downside. So the easy way to fix that is by installing 
a set of bed stiffeners. You can see mine have a little extra bottle opener over here. There's lots of different tie down points, which is great because I've got the decked drawer system that took away some of them. And I'll talk more about the deck in a second, but I wanted to show you these. These are brand new. I just installed these. These are from Charvonia Design. They are the D-ring bed tie downs made out of billet aluminum. And they're nice because they're so easy to move around. They're obviously super, super beefy and better than the stock ones, which I have here somewhere. Aha. But yeah, they're aluminum. And what's nice is they can rotate really easily. They click super, super nicely in place and actually stay in place. You can see that there's this little ball dedent that helps out with that. So easy to install. All you need is a T40 Torx bit. Take that bolt out, take out the old D-ring and just basically install this new one. So I've got a pair of these. This side's a little bit harder to see, but it's in there, I promise. And they pair perfectly with my rail tie downs from Charvonia Design as well. I've shown these on the channel before and I absolutely love them. They just mount right into the factory rails and the way that these are designed are really nice because you can fit a lot of ratchet straps here versus the stock ones. I have a couple of ratchet straps that just don't fit around those ones but they fit around these ones and obviously the big advantage of these is they're super strong. They'll stay in place. On this tent, I have a little battery powered light. These are actually really cool. They've got three modes. I know it doesn't look super bright, but at night, this thing came in clutch for sure. You can press it once for the brightest setting, slightly dimmer setting, and then strobe. I'll have these linked and of course, everything else I have shown in this video linked in the description in case you're interested. This is the setup I have right now, but I'm going to do something to improve this. You'll see in a second. So these are my brand new rope rollers and I'm going to make something pretty cool with them. So these are pretty ingenious. The way they work is you can pull the paracord through one way and then the other way it's super, super tight. So super useful. I'm going to actually give these out to a couple people with some ground tents. And now that it's raining too, it'd be useful for the tarp we have set up. And these indeed did come in clutch to hold up our tarp that was sagging before. It's nice to be able to adjust the tension so easily. But the way I used mine in my own tent was to make an adjustable pulley system for my light. I am fascinated and really impressed by the engineering of these things. The brass roller is buttery smooth and this is the best rope cam ever. So rope rollers from Roller Cam are totally an essential at camp. I actually found out about these from Trail Tacoma and after this trip, I decided I'm keeping a bunch in my truck alongside my paracord in case I need them. So a couple things about the deck, if you don't know what it is, I know I have a lot of stuff on it, but basically it's a truck bed drawer system. So there's two drawers and if I move my stuff aside, I can actually pull out the big drawer completely. And this is where I keep all of my off-road recovery gear. So this is pretty waterproof, dustproof storage. I've had the deck drawer system for I want to say like two years now and it's perfect for an off-road build because as you can see full time I keep my one and a half ton Pro Eagle jack in here. I've got a torque wrench. This is just like my camera equipment and stuff. I have a whole tool bag. Literally this thing rolls out and it's like half of my toolbox in here. But yeah spare lug nuts. Got like a mini axe in here. Recovery strap, my favorite pair of work gloves. My friend Sherry got these for me for Christmas, I think last year, and I've gotten so much use out of them. And then this drawer is kind of hard to show you guys because I've got my camping stuff flowing over it, but I've got more tools back here, tie down straps. I've got some Makita tools. And then underneath, you can kind of see some remnants of it. I've got my air compressor accessories like my air hose, as well as my ARB easy deflator for airing down. 
So this system sits about two thirds of the way up. So it takes up that much bed space in your truck. The reason I like it for camping is because it lays flat and it goes completely over the wheel wells. So if I get in here, you can see it's perfectly flat back here, which makes a great surface for sleeping, working, doing whatever. Oh, and then these ammo cans. I like that I can access them pretty easily. A lot of people wonder about the bed outlet and I just relocated it into my ammo cam when I installed it. You can check out my deck video if you wanna see more info on that. But yeah, a little extra storage you can access while you're back here. I really like that my Molly panel also fit because the deck didn't go all the way to the edge. This one is from a small business called OG Fabrications. Check him out on Instagram. Unlike a lot of other Molly panels I see, this one is made out of starboard, so it's super light and doesn't rust. Oh, and it also works with the factory rails. That's actually how it mounts. So I think with how I have my bed set up, you could technically fit two people in here, but I would say it would get pretty uncomfortable. And that's not because of the tent itself. It's mostly because of the size of my truck bed. It's only a five foot bed. So I'm pretty comfortable and roomy in here. I've got lots of room to change. I feel like I have an adequate amount of space to sleep, but keep in mind, I'm only like five, five. My dog has also slept in here with me before. It is a little tight with us two in it. So I don't know how two adults would fit in here but yeah in case you were curious about that size wise and then onto the sleeping portion which is of course the most important part because you want something comfortable you don't want to be cold so here we go let's start with the lowest layer so you can kind of see them all back here but the first thing i have is this thermarest sleeping pad it's a self-inflating pad it's got a foam padding layer inside as well. So it's pretty comfortable. It isn't super, super thick, but the one big problem with the other mattresses I've had, and I've probably shown on the channel before as well, is that they get pretty cold. So even though I'm not sleeping on the ground, this one has an R value of six, I think. So I definitely value warmth over say like plushness. It would be nice to have something thicker, but the small profile of this when it packs away is awesome to inflate and deflate this wing knot thing is actually really cool it only takes me a minute to like air this thing up and the deflation is also really easy if you just twist this and then this is my sleeping bag it's hard to see because actually and i forgot to show you this but the sleeping pad is pretty long so it kind of just hangs over and so does the bag but the bag is one of these mummy style bags i bought it after sleeping in like my amazon bag that i think was like a 40 degree bag and even in warm weather i was not warm and i like to sleep nice and toasty it's a zero degree bag i've never slept in zero degrees with it though and i was nice and toasty last night but i swear it did not get that cold it must have only gotten into like the 40s minimum because i was nice and warm if you're curious about how comfortable the length is because as you can see everything is extended over the decked system and the deck doesn't even come out all the way to the end of the bed so Lengthwise, I am sleeping on a surface that is less than five feet and I am 5'5", five five, but for me, I don't have an issue with the space because I kind of sleep in like the crawled up position. We're not getting five-star luxury hotel vibes with this setup by any means. I can totally see how it wouldn't work for someone who is tall, but this is my truck and it works for me. And then the other thing I have, this is probably my newest piece of equipment. And this is the case for what I'm about to show you and I'll actually pull this out so you could see the full picture. Yeah, it's upside down right now, but this is a rumple blanket. My friend Paul, who is PNW Tundra on Instagram, actually generously gifted this to me. We met through SEMA, but if you guys have watched any of my tuning videos, specifically my Overland Torque Tune video, he's a tuner in the PNW and we've kind of connected through that. And yeah, so definitely check out his tuning page. But rumble blankets are great for camping because of course they're waterproof, they are nice and warm, and they have a National Park Edition line. So this one is the Crater Lake one. I've never been to Crater Lake, but I'm inspired to go after having this blanket and I know they have a Yosemite one so I'm totally gonna pick one up but yeah I was using this around the campfire last night so warm I didn't need this for sleeping last night but I had it with me too and it's just a gorgeous and totally utilitarian camping blanket 
A couple of weeks ago, I asked you guys for recommendations on portable power stations because I don't think I've ever had one before. I got a lot of great suggestions and one of the top answers was Jackery in terms of the reliability. They're pricey, but this one I actually got for a pretty good deal. Oh, another popular one you guys were telling me about was Blue Eddy. I'm not sure of the exact model, but there was also one I saw that had a really good deal going on. I think it was like $50 off or something. Thing. It wasn't bad at all. I really needed something because I do this whole YouTube thing, of course, and I've got lots of camera batteries to charge up. I think this is like their very, very smallest base model one, the Explorer 240. Nothing fancy, nothing big. There's only one AC outlet. There's two USB outlets, but good enough for a little mini trip like this. Super light too and tiny. I charged my phone last night and now it's at 94%. So I think this is going to be more than enough. Liquid death marketing has totally got me. I do not need to be drinking overpriced still water, but I think these are so fun. Last piece of gear I'll show you back here is this decked D-bag. This specific bag was actually originally a 72 hour emergency kit for two people, but I use it to store all my clothing. And the reason I really like it is because of its profile. This is bigger than a backpack, but also smaller than one of those like carry on suitcases. It's got straps so you can carry it like a backpack and it's got also kind of a hard shell too. And you can see these are kind of some survival tips and stuff from the kit. So originally there was a bunch of different items in here. This instructional kit itself actually is a piece as well. It's buttoned on, but you can pull it off and use it as a splint if needed. I do still have every single item, but I just scatter them throughout my truck because it's easier for me to get to. And I do really, really like this kit, which is why I still have everything, but I more so like it for having all my clothes and stuff. And then lastly, if you don't know what this is this is sort of an inconvenience with this whole setup because it's actually bolted down onto my deck i picked this up from tacoma beast but this is actually an expedition essentials max track traction board mount So as I've been saying, my build is mostly for off-road. Traction boards are very important when I go out to the desert, so they definitely need to have a place in my truck bed. A lot of people will mount these to the side of their camper shell if they have one. I don't think I've ever seen another one bolted onto a deck, but it works out really well. It looks really nice. A little inconvenient for a setup like this. There is still plenty of room on this side for me to sleep, so I don't feel like I'm hitting this all the time. I mean, I can secure my keys and stuff on this this bar but honestly it would be better at least for a camping setup to not have this mount in here but again that's not what I do full-time in my truck so I just kind of deal with this but again for someone like me it doesn't really get in the way if you've stuck with me so far that was all of my gear for my actual camping setup but of course I brought a lot of other tools and supplies for this trip that maybe you'll also find interesting I got this flashlight from Richie from Rigid. And if you guys don't know Rigid's an off-road lighting company, I think they make lights that go on the TRD Pro Tacomas. Like look how bright that is. At night, this thing was insane too. I could see like the tops of all these trees. You can see the dust in the air, spores. And then the best thing is this has a rechargeable battery. So thank you, Richie and Rigid for this. Definitely has become clutch for this trip. My Dometic Go hydration water jug with the rechargeable faucet is always a hit at camp. This is really great for washing dishes and filling bottles too. And then so many people on my channel ask me about my watch setup. This is just a Baby G, which is like a smaller version of like a men's G-Shock. I've had this for years and I used to have an Apple Watch, but Cody always used to like chew on my watch straps and stuff. So I switched back to this and it's just so nice because it's rugged. I don't have to worry about charging it. I have a little compass attachment. So that's the watch setup in case you were curious. I actually have links in the description to this, like a men's version and the compass. Some other things I have on my truck build that I think are useful for camping. And I've showed a bunch of these on the channel before, but for those of you who are newer, 
First thing, when you open the door, I have these puddle pods. These are from Miso Customs. They are very bright and at night they help out a lot. Right now they're only activated with when the dome lights and map lights turn on, basically all the interior lights. But Miso sells a kit in which you can turn them on with a switch, which I totally need to get and install on my panel here, because you can see I've got a blank here. By the way, if you're looking for custom switch panels, you should check out Guild Outfitters. If you recently saw, I actually installed an outlet in my cab behind the center console, which I was using while I was driving up to charge my laptop. But they also sell these switch panels where you can get custom switch configuration inserts. I really want my style to be set up to look OEM or like it came from the factory for the most part. So this thing is great from Guild. Going on with lighting, I also have the VLEDs footwell lighting kit that also activates whenever the map light and dome lights turn on. These are always useful, but especially when you're camping or off-roading in the dark. There is one downside though. They show how dirty your floor mats are. I want to make a video all about my seat setup. I've got these Desert Desert Seat Jackers. I highly recommend this modification to any third generation Toyota Tacoma owner. Basically they change the seating angle and in my truck you see I can't really adjust for that. And it's really difficult to actually explain this. You have to feel it, but it allows you to sit in a much more ergonomical position and it's a game changer for road trips. I had no problems with my legs or back on basically the 10 or so hour trip up here to Yosemite. Another great reason to have them for me is when paired with the rear seat jackers, which I have in the back of the seat over here, I actually have their air compressor mount and I have an ARB air compressor. You can kind of see, literally underneath contained in my seat. So cool. An air compressor is a great piece of recovery equipment, not only for yourself, but for other vehicles as well. And then with the seat jackers, you can also get a front multi-mount panel. So you can see this panel mounts onto the seat jackers. And then I also have their quick drop fire extinguisher mount. Great piece of safety equipment to have in the truck. And this makes it easy to access. So this is my Garmin Tread Overland Edition. Actually, this mount is pretty nice. I'll show you. It's like this magnetic mount and I just have it on one of the suction cup holders and it's super strong. Out in the desert last week when I was going over all those whoops, this thing didn't fall down. Here it is though, it actually can run off of battery power once it's charged and it charges while it's on the magnet and I actually have this wired up to my little 12 volt outlet over here. I usually put it on this page, you can see there is a gyroscope on it. You can connect in reach and actually get like text messages and stuff. You can add different vehicles. So this is my Tacoma profile. And if we go to the map, this is where we are. We're at the Tamarack Flat Campgrounds, almost 6,500 feet up. This thing will show you dirt roads. This thing has trail navigation, off-road maps, trail ratings, points of interest, and a lot more. It really is a safety tool and I get a lot of use out of it when I have no service and I'm off the grid during trips like this. Obviously, I also have my little GoPro on a suction cup mount from Skosh. This one's really good too. And to get shots up front, typically I just use my Garmin mini dash cam. And the coolest thing is I like how this is powered. It takes power from behind the rear view mirror using an adapter from Dongar Technologies. Shout out to my friend Eddie from my gym. Look what he got me. I think this is the nicest Tacoma related gift anyone's ever gotten me. In the rear back here, this is where I keep most of my like safety equipment. So this was from my decked kit that I was talking about earlier. We've got a mini first aid kit and this one from Uncharted actually comes with quite a bit of stuff. So see, these are other remnants from the Uncharted and deck kit too that I just keep here. But this is a pretty all-inclusive first aid kit. Back here, I also have Durline Trail Gear recovery gloves. Haven't cracked these open yet, but I'm excited to get to use these. Air filtration masks, also from the decked Uncharted kit. Umbrella, band-aid, sunscreen, all that good stuff. In my cup holders, I always keep these window breakers. 
and also emergency seat belt cutters. Toyota actually sent me this one, so this one's extra cool. One tap and this thing will shatter the window. Hopefully I'll never have to use this. Let me know what you think of all of this gear and any recommendations you have, of course. Overall, my somewhat simple truck camping setup worked for this quick trip up north and I had a great time. It's always fun to get to put gear to use and talk about it too. So I had a good time making this video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Now, as I've been saying throughout this video, I am not trying to proclaim that this setup right here is ideal by any means. I can totally see how something like this wouldn't necessarily work for everyone, but it did work well for me. You know, I survived in the rain. It did get pretty cold here in Yosemite. It did the job, didn't break the bank, and also I think most importantly for me, it didn't change my whole rig setup. I'm about to tear this thing down and my truck will be back to what it was before. Of course, I would love to hear recommendations from you guys, especially if you use your truck in a similar way to me. And I was thinking throughout this whole trip, it would be really interesting to go camping in a rig that's more dedicated to overlanding, seeing what that's like and how it compares to something like this. Anyways, I gotta go tear this thing down. We are heading out. We've got a long drive back to San Diego, but thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to connect more with me, you can follow me on my Instagram. It is at Chloe Kuo Taco. I post more in real time on there, but other than that, thank you again. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.